Most cinema fans among us will be aware of Titan, the homeworld of Marvel villain Thanos. While the Mad Titan himself may be a work of fiction, the planet he was born on is anything but. It is based on a real location in our solar system with said name. Titan is a moon of the gas giant planet Saturn, and while not quite the haven of technology and prosperity Thanos describes it as in Infinity War, this moon has intrigued scientists for centuries for many other reasons. Today we'll be flying out there to visit Saturn's largest satellite and looking at how its conditions now might just pave the way for this planet-like moon to become an oasis of life similar to the Earth. Titan is the contemporary name of Saturn's largest moon. It was discovered on the 25th of March 1655 by Christian Huygens, who was inspired by Galileo's discovery of Jupiter's four largest moons some 45 years prior. With Galileo's discovery, and our own moon, Titan was the sixth moon to be discovered, and was named Saturni Luna, literally meaning Saturn's moon in Latin. However, it is also known as Saturn VI, after Giovanni Cassini published his research on four more moons of Saturn using a Roman numeral numbering system, and this became the norm among the astronomical community for addressing Saturn's satellites. However, the system was frozen in 1789, as more moons were being discovered orbiting the gas giant, and Titan had been moved from 2nd to 4th to 6th place respectively, causing confusion. 58 years later, John Herschel, son of astronomer William Herschel, published the results of astronomical surveys from the previous decade, and referred to the moons of Saturn as Titans from Greek mythology, eventually adapting the name for Saturn VI to Titan. It is certainly a fitting name, as Titan was once thought to be the largest moon in the solar system, but we have since discovered that Ganymede of Jupiter is slightly bigger, and we'll cover what caused this misconception shortly. Nevertheless, this moon is still impressively large, at 5,149 kilometers in diameter, it is 50% larger and 80% more massive than our own moon. This impressive size also makes it slightly larger than Mercury, the innermost planet in the solar system, often resulting in Titan being referred to as a planet moon. Though slightly smaller than Ganymede, Titan appears larger when observed, and this is because it has a dense atmospheric layer hundreds of kilometers thick. This means that it appears larger than the physical body actually is. Titan is the only known moon with an atmosphere this dense, and so if you were to place it where our moon orbits the Earth, it would appear 11 times larger in the sky than the moon does, despite being less dense. Titan is believed to be composed of mainly ice and rock. It has a rocky core with various layers of ice below the surface. We know this because the probes which have visited Titan in the mid-2000s detected low-frequency radio waves from the moon and Titan's outer atmosphere is not a good reflector of these types of waves, so the detection of such indicates that there is an interior liquid layer, one which separates the exterior crust of the moon from its core. Essentially, the crust floats on this liquid layer. This interior slice is expected to be mostly water ice and ammonia, meaning it may have the conditions for life to emerge within the body. However, with current technology at least, we don't have any way of exploring that deeply. It's only in the last few decades that we've even managed to see what lies on its surface, due to its atmospheric obstruction. Titan's unique dense atmosphere consists of over 98% nitrogen, with a small amount of methane and hydrogen. Due to its size, its atmosphere is much thicker than the Earth's, because while it is massive enough to retain its atmosphere, its gravity is not enough to keep the atmospheric layer bolted down as flat as a larger body like the Earth can. This results in an atmospheric layer over 600 kilometers thick. This covering makes Titan look the same all over, but like most moons, Titan's orbital period is the same as its rotational period. Simply put, one day is the same as one year on Titan, and both clock in at just under 16 Earth days. These equivalent periods mean that one side of Titan is locked into a synchronized rotation with Saturn, and much like our own moon, one side permanently faces the planet while the other side faces out into space. But for both observers on the outside and anything living on the inside, it doesn't make a difference, as its atmosphere disconnects the two. The name Titan traces its origins back to Greek mythology, but in the last few decades we have sent probes and satellites to orbit and even land on Titan to learn more about its origins, and it's likely that, quite unsurprisingly, it began with the host planet, Saturn. 
Most of the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are thought to have formed through the process of co-accretion, where the remaining dust and rocks floating around after the formations of gas giants collected into smaller satellites which now orbit them. Titan's size and orbit dominates the Saturn system, and the planet's other moons have much more irregular orbits than those larger moons of Jupiter, so Titan seems a little out of place. One theory for this is that there were once larger moons like Titan orbiting Saturn that collided and crashed, breaking up and forming smaller satellite chunks, with Titan somehow escaping, or perhaps Titan formed from the material left by these collisions. Other theories suggest that Titan may have started its formation with materials on the outer rim of the solar system before the gravity of its giant host pulled it into an uneasy orbit. Either way, its remote location in the solar system gives it a freezing climate, with a surface temperature of around minus 179 degrees Celsius. The surface of the moon receives just 1% of the sunlight Earth does, and over 90% of the light is drowned out by the atmospheric covering. However, this atmosphere doesn't always work against the moon. The airborne methane creates a greenhouse effect, retaining a very small amount of heat for the planet's surface. This greenhouse effect drives much of the weather on Titan. With the moon merely a few degrees colder, methane would freeze. However, surface temperatures manage to remain above the freezing point, and so Titan experiences showers of liquid methane pouring from its thick clouds above. Scientists believe that organic compounds are created in the upper atmosphere by ultraviolet radiation, and these compounds are brought down to the surface by the methane rain, eroding and depositing dark material in lake-like formations across its surface. For many years, we had no way to analyse the surface, but this all changed thanks to the Cassini-Huygens mission, a 19-year mission to explore Titan, named after two of its pioneers, which was launched in 1997. On the 15th of January 2005, the Huygens probe descended from the craft and landed on Titan, giving us our first glimpse of the surface of the alien world. The first pictures sent back where the probe landed are, as of the making of this video, the only pictures taken from the surface of a body beyond Mars, and they show some fascinating features which tell their own unique stories. As the craft approached the surface, mountains could be seen. While they appear rocky, we know that most of these mountains are actually just huge expanses of solid ice, but they are so cold, rigid and immovable under the barren conditions of Titan that they have existed for millions of years and shaped their entire landscape. The photograph sent back from the landing of the Huygens probe shows rocks on the surface of what appears to be a dark riverbed, where the organic materials have been deposited. These boulders you can see are also chunks of solid water ice, expected to have fallen from the mountains and been weathered, shaped and smoothed by the lakes of liquid methane. While the landing probe itself was unable to photograph any evidence of these lakes, the airborne part of the Cassini probe flew by Titan's North Pole, detecting and revealing these huge lakes. A mapping of the surface lakes revealed that there is not enough liquid methane to account for the quantity in Titan's atmosphere, and so volcanic processes are the attributed mechanism for adding the remaining methane to the atmosphere. Titan has cryovolcanoes, which are generally much flatter than volcanoes on Earth, and erupt mostly water and ammonia from the liquid layer within. Titan has been likened by the scientists to a very early primordial version of the Earth. It has similar conditions to what we believe were in effect when the first life emerged on this planet, and scientists believe that the UV radiation in the upper atmosphere of Titan could begin complex chemical reactions required for life to emerge. The only problem with Titan now is that it is simply too cold for life to exist on the surface. It has all the ingredients to be a thriving, habitable world. It just literally needs defrosting, so to speak. With mountains of ice storing water and riverbeds to hold the liquid already carved out, if Titan was warmed up, it could become a much more hospitable environment, an oasis even. But in the absence of technology, how could such a distant and massive moon become hot enough to support life? A star is not forever. Our sun is currently burning away the hydrogen fuel at its core through nuclear fusion, keeping it in a state we call the main sequence. But when this fuel is all used up, something spectacular will start to happen. In 5 billion years, the sun's core will run out of hydrogen fuel, and the outer layers will dramatically expand and cool down, ballooning the sun to over 250 times its current size. It will have become a red giant. This process will engulf most of the inner planets, frying the Earth, if not consuming it altogether. But Titan, which is much colder and much further away, 
will suddenly be much nearer to the sun's vastly expanded radiating surface and as a result it will receive more of the sun's energy. When this happens, Titan will start to warm up and the lakes of liquid methane will evaporate and the surface temperatures on the moon could rise to levels high enough to melt the massive mountains of water ice. This water will drain down into the mineral rich and now empty riverbeds left by the methane and organic compounds and Titan will become warm enough to maintain lakes of liquid water on its surface, an essential component of life as we know it. Titan will become an estranged replica of the Earth. The haze that comprises much of Titan's upper atmosphere will be depleted and dispersed by the massive increase in UV radiation from the sun, and the greenhouse effect will warm the moon enough to create a habitable environment which retains its atmosphere, likely lasting for at least a few hundred million years. Scientists believe that the condition of Titan's atmosphere and the extra UV radiation should enable complex molecules such as tholins to evolve on the moon's surface. Under these conditions, the building blocks for DNA, RNA, proteins and even cell membranes could all be formed, meaning these chemical reactions could one day give rise to complex cellular and perhaps even multicellular life. This is not a definitive future, we expect life to take hundreds of millions of years to evolve and Titan's ammonia levels could slow down the chemical reactions to the point that they do not manage to occur before this environment becomes unstable but it is easy to see why the prospect has scientists excited. They believe that this was the time in which simple life began emerging on Earth, and if we are any indication, then Titan may become a haven of complex life forms. So the question is, with so many possibilities on this moon, when are we next going back to study it? Well, the short answer is probably not anytime soon. Having already visited Titan, space agencies like NASA and the ESA seem to have other priorities. Nonetheless, there have been a few proposed missions. One such mission is a joint mission to create what is essentially a hot air balloon which will float around Titan's lower atmosphere and observe the surface for about six months. However, this collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency was in competition with a similar program for selection to explore Jupiter's moons instead of Saturn's, and in 2009 it was announced that the Jupiter mission had got the nod ahead of the Saturn mission. Something slightly less expensive is the hypothesized time mission, which is a probe that instead of floating above the surface, would land on one of the methane lakes and float there for up to six months. This would allow us to learn much more about the methane lake formations on Titan, and was proposed to be the focus of NASA's 12th Discovery mission, a series of more focused missions by NASA. Unfortunately, this proposal also failed to make the final cut. But a mission to Titan may yet be the subject of the next discovery mission by NASA, as the journey to Enceladus and Titan probe, or JET, has been proposed as a mission to analyse two of Saturn's most intriguing moons. We believe Enceladus may harbour its own life-bearing conditions, and so joining a mission to both moons might make it more beneficial in NASA's eyes. Better yet, this probe will focus on detecting potential biosignatures from the planet as opposed to just its physical properties so astrobiologists would have a much better idea of the likelihood and nature of any potential life on these moons. As of yet, however, none of these missions have materialised, and Titan remains waiting for us, over a billion kilometres away. Many moons in the solar system have their own fascinating properties, but Titan is one of the most diverse, complex and brilliant satellites we've ever found. Its unique dense atmosphere and climate are a reminder that the moons can be just as incredible as their parent planets, with similar conditions to the early Earth, and its future conditions providing an unparalleled opportunity for complex life to emerge again after it has vanished from the Earth, Titan is a treasure of solar system exploration. While missions following the Cassini mission have been stifled by financial and resource constrictions, as technology improves we will begin to learn more about this moon's physics, chemistry and biology and before long, we may have our first reachable Earth analogue. Titan is like a seed for life, all we have to do is add heat, and this frozen moon may become a thriving, warm oasis in the cold vacuum of space.